So today we are considering how we protect what we love. It is also Earth Day that we are honoring today, and we're thinking about our love for the Earth. As part of this, uh, we will have an activity which we will be doing at the tables, but before that, uh, we have prepared some of our own love letters to the Earth or to things that we love in nature. So I would like to share my dramatically folded letter with you. Beloved Earth, through the eons you've seen magma, ice, collision, destruction, flourishing, death, rebirth, change, and the coming and going of countless flora and fauna. Through it all, you've continued a turning, continued revolving as you journey through space, solid and grounded amongst the passage of time. The living child of the explosions of stars and mother to countless manifestations of life. Your beauty astounds and amazes. The oceans, the forest, the mountains, the rivers, all of them manifestations of your beauty and our siblings on this planet. Humanity was birthed from the remnants of star stuff. You've nourished humanity and loved us even when we have lost our relationship with you. We live in your kindness, knowingly and unknowingly connected to all of the life around us. May I live in a way that connects me wholly with you and with this beauty and abundance of life around me. May we all flow with the oceans and rivers. May we all find the solidity of the mountains. May we breathe deeply with the forests. May we look up to the stars and the sun, knowing they are our living cousins. May we find nourishment for our bodies and minds and nourish the world around us. Beloved Gaia, your resilience amazes me. May I nourish my resilient life within myself and amongst the communities of which I am connected to. A love letter to the earth from Thich Nhat Hanh. You, Mother Earth, are the most precious flower in our solar system a true jewel of the cosmos. It took you a billion years to begin to manifest the first living beings, complex molecules perhaps brought to you from outer space, starting to come together in self-replicating structures, slowly becoming more and more like living cells. Light particles from distant stars, millions of light years away, came to visit and stay a while. Small cells gradually became larger cells. Unicellular organisms evolved into multicellular organisms. Life developed from deep within the oceans, multiplying and prospering, steadily improving the atmosphere. Slowly, the ozone layer could form, preventing harmful radiation from reaching your surface and allowing life on land to prosper. It was only then, as the miracle of photosynthesis unfurled, that you began to wear the exquisite green mantle that you do today. But all phenomena are impermanent and ever-changing. Life over vast areas of the Earth has already been destroyed more than five times including 65 million years ago, when the impact of a giant asteroid caused the mass extinction of dinosaurs and three quarters of all other species. Dear mother, I am in awe of your capacity to be patient and creative, despite all the harsh conditions that you have endured. I promise to remember our extraordinary journey of eons and to live my days with the awareness that we are all your children and that we are and that we are all made of stars i promise to do my part contributing my own energy of joy and harmony to the glorious symphony of life i wanted to honor and 
thank the UU Ministries for the Earth for the inspiration for today's service, which is called Protecting the Ones We Love. And the idea behind it is that if we do indeed love the Earth, what are we doing to protect it? And so my letter, because I was thinking about there's so many different aspects that I could tackle because there's so many different parts of the earth that I love. And I thought, when I go traveling, for example, what's the one place that I usually hit? And it's a botanical gardens. And even yesterday, I had an opportunity to walk around the conservatory around Central Park. How many of you have visited that? Yep. It's quite marvelous. I would highly recommend it. There's so many different flowers that are in bloom right now. And if you go a couple of weeks from now, all the wisterias will probably be in bloom as well. So I too wrote a letter and I too printed it out. And it's even in an envelope and printed on official fourth U letterhead. Ooh and ah, uh, with my signature here on the bottom. And it reads, Dear flowers, you come from humble beginnings, the lowest form of the earth there is, dirt and mud and sometimes even stinky fertilizers. And out of a small tiny seed grows a tree or a shrub or a bush and from that a bud. In due time, you break free and appear to us in many different shapes and scents and colors and sizes. And you continually reinvent yourself by cross-pollinating, working very closely with insects and the wind to make sure you continue to survive and thrive. It is your beauty that brings me comfort when I'm going through those difficult times in my life. When I'm sad, all I need to do is look at you and boom, I get an instant boost of joy. Your resilience brings me hope. Even during the dead of winter, when all life comes to an end, you somehow spring back to life again every single time like that crocus eager to defy the snow and the ice. And to quote from an old song, you get knocked down, but you get up again. It is your creativity that inspires me to not see any situation in black and white, but all the colors of the rainbow can coexist in peaceful harmony, and there is infinite possibility in our world. No wonder many artists out there use you as a model. However, I do feel like I owe you an apology for not knowing how to take care of you. I'm not sure if I was just born with a brown thumb or I've developed it over the years, but somehow you seem to die under my care more often than not which is why please don't give me any pot flowers for any special occasion. But even in the wild, I know you are always with us for only a brief period of time, reminding me of the impermanence of everything and that at some point, all life comes to an end. When it is time for us as humans to also return to the earth where we came from, you show up in the form of bouquets and wreaths at celebration of life services and on top of our coffins to remind us that even in short periods of time, we too can experience beauty, resilience, and creativity. Love always, Reverend Jonifer. All right, Deb, would you like to share with us what you wrote to the earth? I wasn't expecting to do this, but it feels like, um, I always say this in circles or when I'm doing ceremonies, when you speak it out loud, it takes on a, and it's held by people that you care about, that it takes on a, an extra special resonance. So this is my love letter to trees. Dear beautiful trees, 
you have sustained me so deeply over the years from the tree in Courthouse Park across from my childhood house. I'm gonna cry because I love trees. <laughs> to my cypress and willow trees in Central Park that comforted me after my dad died and many other occasions. To the oak trees in Riverside Park where I sit for my tree sits when I meditate every day. You sustain me, you ground me, you nurture and nourish me and envelop me in peace and joy and gratitude. I'm looking forward to my next tree sit. So I hope that you read yours aloud to someone that can hold it with you and celebrate the love of whatever it is that you've expressed there. Thank you.